What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we are going to be adding the trip pan and trigger mechanisms to our cages. But first, if this is your first time being on this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're doing a 100 subscriber giveaway. Check out the other video for that. I'll drop the link right up here in the video so you can jump over to that. Check out the giveaway and make sure you enter into that. Four easy steps, super simple. All you gotta do is be subscribed, drop a comment in that video. Go over to my Instagram, follow me on Instagram, and like the Instagram post on Instagram. That's it, and you're entered. We're gonna do the drawing on June 5th or 6th, depending on when I can get the upload in there and, and uh, post it, but that's when it's gonna post. All right, all you're gonna need today is some sort of thin gauged metal. I'm using an old shelf. This is gonna be for your pan. So any kind of sheet metal will do pretty much as long as it's not flimsy. As you can see, it is the very first cage I ever built. Right there, that, that pan is actually an old ammo can lid that I made that out of. So pretty much any kind of steel will work. I've caught tons of cats in that cage, by the way. So if you watch any of my videos, you'll see I've caught a bunch in there. Um, I had something break out of it uh, this past season. You can check that video out as well. If you haven't seen it, that cage got tore up. It didn't take much to fix it though. And you can see I used a different way of connecting on this one. I just used nuts and bolts to connect this one on instead of doing the uh, weld job like we did on this last one. Besides that though, that cage has been working beautifully. I've caught a bunch of cats in it. Um, all we're gonna be doing today, like I said, we're gonna do the uh, trigger mechanisms. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways of doing it. We're gonna put it in the pan and we're gonna put in the uh, door lock and that's it. Then this cage is done, all it is, it'll be ready for paint and it'll start catching. So let's get building. All right, so we're gonna do the pan first. I'm making it out of this old piece of uh, sheet metal, which is actually an old shelf. What you wanna do is if you look at your cage here, we're gonna go about six or so inches, six or seven inches from the back, okay? That gives you plenty of space in the back like you can see on this cage here where you can put your baits and lures and other stuff to the very far back of the cage so the cat will have to go all the way in to get to it. And then we're gonna make it just wide enough so that it doesn't quite touch the sides. So for this one, this is nine inches wide total. So we're gonna make about a seven inch wide pan and the pan's gonna be about eight inches long. Seems to work pretty well. So what we're gonna do here is mark out our pan. Like I said, we're gonna make it about eight inches long. So we'll just use the pre-existing edge here for our one side. Come down to eight inches. Mark that. Come out seven inches. Go mark there. Like I said, we're gonna make it about seven inches wide and eight inches make a mark here. All right, now all we do is just get something, uh, some sort of a straight edge. We've got this piece of steel here, we mark it out. This doesn't have to be exact, just get it close. And that's gonna be our pan, that's gonna become our pan for our cage here. Next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna leave some of this down here. I wanna keep some of that metal, because what I'm gonna do with that, is that's actually gonna make, I'm gonna make some tabs out of that to fold down, to attach to the cage itself. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. I'll cut that out, and then I'll show you the next step.
right guys, so like I was saying, we're gonna put this pan, it's gonna go inside the cage, but the way it fits is I made these tabs so they can drop down in this. That's what I'm gonna have to trim down just a little bit so it'll fit inside each of these. But I've got three of them, one tab here, here, and here. So those will fit down inside these holes. Like I said, I gotta trim down just a little bit, but this is gonna become our trigger pan, okay? So I'm gonna get this trimmed up and then we'll, I'll show you how to put it inside the cage. All right guys, so when we go to install this, like I said, we're gonna do six inches from the back. But before I do that, I'm gonna weld a, a little nut about that big, just with a hole big enough so that I can put the uh, eighth inch cold roll through it so I have a trigger wire. And I'm gonna weld that on right like that. And I'll show you guys that in a minute, but basically, hopefully you can see this in the camera. Just weld it on right there. And then I'll be able to put the wire through it and attach, and then bend the wire around it to hold it in place. So I'm gonna weld this on real quick and then uh, we'll install the pan. All right, so we got that welded back on there. You can see just welded the nut in place there. It's on there good. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'll be able to feed my uh, wire through that and we'll show you how that all works in a minute. But first, let's get the uh, pan put in. All we're gonna do, reach down into our cage here. And I said you want to count about six up, so one, two, three, four, five, six. You want at least six inches of space. You can even do seven. Just give it a decent gap. And we're going to put our little tabs right through there. Once we get our tabs in, just going to grab our pliers and you're going to kind of fold them down. This is where an extra set of hands comes in handy or a small plant to help hold it in place while we fold these down. All on the same line. Kind of roll it, don't pinch it, you don't want to pinch the wire. You want to roll that tab around the wire. Here. Get this clamp out of the way. You can kind of see I just rolled that now. Just works as a hinge. I'll roll this next one. It just takes a little bit of finagling. You just gotta kind of work it, work it around. You want to kind of just work from the very edge of that tab so that it rolls instead of pinches. You don't want to grab it and just fold it over, because then you'll end up pinching your wire, and the pan won't work as well. It's about 100 degrees out here today. It is hot this weekend. Finally decided to warm up. All right, so we've got our pan attached, as you can see right there. Nice and simple. We'll be able to attach everything else to that. So that's how we do it. All right, next we're gonna do our trigger on the side. Like I said before in previous videos, there's a few different ways you can do the triggers. Uh, you can do a little bit more complicated like we're going to do today, or you can do really, really simple like I did with my very first cage that I was showing you guys earlier. I'll show you that one right now. All right, so this trigger system is super simple, really easy to do. All you need is an eyelet, and this I just used a, a big one right here, but you can pretty much use any eyelet you want. You just need a piece of wire that you're going to run up through the eyelet, and it runs down to the pan. Uh, this one is a, literally, it just sticks through a little... Uh, Got a little 90 hook there that I hooked the uh, cold world steel through. 
It runs up on the inside of the cage. I welded this eyelet to it and the wire comes through. I just made a nice little bend in a flat spot here and then cut a little groove into the, uh, into the cold rolled steel and then just have a little bit of a tab that hangs down. I've got plenty of cats in this cage. This trigger system works really well. It's super simple. If that's the route you choose to go, it works great. The only problem I've run into with this setup is cats kind of hang like to hang out in front of the cage a little bit and they'll rub on the front of the cage. And so I've had cats on camera hit this bar and set the set the trap off. Um, and then they're wandering around the outside of the cage and then they walk off because now they can't get inside because they tripped it from the outside. That's the only downfall I've had with this setup. Besides that, everything works flawlessly with it. I've caught, like I've said, I've caught plenty of cats in this cage. Uh, and if you go through my videos from this year, you'll see that. Uh, I think I caught like five or six of my cats out of this cage alone, or in this past season. So there's one setup, super easy. The one we're going to be doing today looks just like this. It's uh, similar to uh, the cam trip cages that I've seen out there, which I didn't know at the time when I built this. Um, I just uh, found a hand-drawn picture online uh, showing a cage trap like this uh, with a wire leading up to a little triangle and then the front of the triangle was a, a little trigger stick. Uh, going into the rails here that held the holds the door up. Um, I looked at that and said, oh, it looks simple enough and it'll keep the cats from knocking into it and dropping the door. So I'll build something like that. So that's what I did and that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, super simple design. And like I said, the way you hook your uh, wire in there, hopefully you can see this. It just hooks right through that little nut in the back on the uh, pan. So that's what we're going to be doing. Two other methods of doing these triggers that I've uh, seen. Uh, instead of putting the uh, tripping mechanism all the way up to the front, you put your, trip, your uh, little uh, angle mechanism back here. You just basically weld a little panel right here. Use like a round washer, drill two holes in it. One's going to be in the back and one's going to be at the top. So you're gonna do it kind of on camera here. So what you do is you drill a hole right here and right here, like that. So you drill a hole here and here. This wire on top would run all the way to the front of your cage and go underneath the bar. And this wire would run straight down to your pan. And so when the pan gets stepped on, it rotates and pulls the tripping mechanism out from underneath your door and drops your door. Pretty simple setup, real easy to do. If you choose to go that way, you could do that as well. Um, I think that's kind of similar to the way uh, some of, uh, there's other pictures of cages online that I've seen that look like that. I think it's Briar Patch that makes them like that. So that's another, uh, another way to go. Uh, the other way that I've seen people do uh, they use them a lot on uh, hog style cage traps, but I've seen them uh, used on these type of traps too, is uh, using the uh, conibear trigger tripping mechanisms, and they run the wire on the top of the cage back to the uh, tripper, and then they've got their little wires that hang down, and they trip it that way. Uh, I've seen guys use that on double door cage designs, um, and I've seen them run them all the way to the back and then if the wires get uh, tangled with in the back then it trips the cage and then in that case you wouldn't even need a pan. So uh, again that's just another method. I'm not familiar with it. I'm not doing that today. I'm just going to show you what I've been doing. But those are some other options. Look around online, play with stuff, see what you want to do and you know kind of go your own route. Build, build these however you want, whatever works best for you. That, that's what works best for you. I've seen guys do these with string and uh, some sticks that they've managed to make the door stay up and then the string or whatever gets pulled in the back and it sets it off. I've seen guys set these up with mouse traps bolted to the top of these things to set them off. I have no idea how that trigger system works, but you can look it up online. 
There's lots of different ways to make these doors uh, trip and fall. This is just what I'm using. So there you go <laughs> for what it's worth. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut a square piece of this steel off and we're gonna mount it right here. It's gonna be about three by three piece of metal. I've cut a uh, little template. This is what I use for all my cages. Um, why this works, you have this, this is where it rotates here. Your wire hooks into the back here and then your uh, trigger stick that sticks out underneath your cage door sticks out from right there. And that's pretty much it. Um, and that's gonna mount right onto the side of the cage right here. And we'll drill a hole through the front here and we'll mount it all in. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna mount the, uh, I'm gonna cut the little square here. We'll mount that on. And then uh, we'll mount it in the bolt and we'll cut a new uh, triangle from our template. And we'll get it all put together. So I'm gonna cut all the pieces out and then we'll mount everything onto the gauge. two pieces cut out. We've got our square piece of steel and our little uh, rectangular piece. I already drilled the holes out in the rectangular piece just like that. What these holes are for, one of them is just for a little nut. Make sure you got the, uh, the sorry, the, the little bolt and the nut. Um, one corner is going to be on there so it sits on your bolt and it can rotate freely just like that. That's what's going to make a pendulum back and forth so that when you mount it to the side of the cage here, the wire's going to run, trip wire is going to run from the corner of your uh, one triangle all the way down to your trip pan down here. This little hole right here is what you're going to run a nail or a little piece of metal or whatever you've got. I found these nails work pretty good. You just drop them through like this and then we're going to fold it over so that uh, it becomes your little uh, your trip trigger and we'll cut it to size. We'll show you how we do that in just a second. That's inside with the uh, with the vise. This piece, it goes right on like that. So we're gonna weld all this into place and then I'll show you how it all goes together here. <laughs> Alright guys, so we've added our base plate and I welded this bolt on right here. It's still really hot, so I'm not touching anything. Um, so what we do with that bolt, that, yeah that bolt, it was, wow this guy's even hot for us from sitting on it. Sorry, it goes on right here. We're going to put a couple washers on behind it and then it'll sit up far enough away from the cage material that it'll rotate back and forth. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that nail through this side and it's going to go right where that little red dot is. We're going to drill a hole right there into our rail and that's where the door is going to come down and it's going to sit right on that little piece of the nail sticking through. I can show you on one of these cages here. So on the inside there. You can kind of see right in that hole, that's where the nail comes through, okay? 
on the outside, that's the nail and it comes in here. And then we're gonna take some of our square tubing instead of using one of these, uh, one of these big long nuts that I had from before and we're just gonna use a piece of square tubing. And then you can see right there behind it, I've got those washers. So we're gonna do the nail and then we're gonna get our wire all set on there. And then this whole setup will be done. So we're gonna set it up just like this guy did. And then we'll do our door stop. All right guys, so the way I bend the nails, if you can see my vise here, there's, you probably can't see. Right in there, there's these little bolts that hold on this plate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the back end of the nail, this piece here, right on along one of those. And that's gonna give me about enough gap to uh, add the little piece of angled plate that I already have cut. And I'll just clamp down the vise just like that. And then I'll fold this down. So I'm right about 90 degrees. I say about because it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be pretty close. Then you end up with the nail bent just like that. And then we'll go add it to the angled piece. All right guys, so next we're gonna take a little piece of this uh, square tubing and we're just gonna cut about a half inch to an inch of it at most, an inch at most, so probably a little less, maybe two quarters of an inch to half an inch of it. And it's gonna make a little sleeve. And what that sleeve's gonna do is it's just gonna kind of give a guide area for this nail that we just bent. And it's gonna fit inside the sleeve like that. And then it's gonna go into a hole that we're gonna drill in right through the back here. And then that's where the nail will go through. It'll go through the sleeve, just in like that. And it'll just kind of keep it from falling out once the pan's been tripped and it slides back. It's got somewhere to go instead of just hanging down and then the nail falls out eventually because the cage is banging around and then you lose it and then you can't reset your cage. So you have to bring the whole thing back to get it all reset back up. So it just kind of saves you from having that kind of a headache. So I'm gonna drill the hole. I'm going to add the sleeve, um, and then I'm gonna mount this, and then we're gonna get into putting the uh, rest of this together. And like I said, we're just gonna use a couple of washers, just drop them right over the bolt like that. Um, and that'll kind of give you enough spacing just to get your uh, angle piece out and away from the cage. So that it has some movement space. All right, I'm gonna get going on that and then I'll show you uh, what it looks like once I'm done. Put the little uh, extension right here with the square steel, and then we dr and we drilled the hole, and we put that over top of it, and then we just weld it around to hold it in place. We've already bent our nail, so it's all ready to go. And as you can see, just put it through so that this kind of rocks back and forth, and you got it in that center hole. And you got these two that are loose. This is the bigger one. That one goes on the bolt. And then, like I said, this is the one that the wire is going to grab that runs down to your pan. So put this right over here. Slide our nail in through the little tunnel there. And that goes into the uh, rail right here, and that'll stop. That'll uh, catch the door, and the door will just sit on that nail like this from the inside of the rail. And it'll sit there until the pan gets tripped, and then that rocks back, and the door drops. So next, we got to add our wire that runs down to our pan. That's with this 8 inch cold roll just for that we bought. And it goes to there, to here. And then you want to grab 
You want to add a couple more inches onto it, what these extra few inches are for. Uh, so you can wrap it through the hole on the triangle here, and then you're gonna hang, you're gonna bend it and angle it in, and then you're gonna wrap it around the nut inside the uh, cage there. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna cut this, and uh, we'll get all that bent into shape, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So if you saw me messing with that on the even on the high speed, it took me a little while. But what you gotta do is you gotta bend that wire so that you can fit it through that little nut, and then you gotta bring it out and bend it again without that little piece popping out. Once it's all in place, it'll hold, it's not going anywhere, you shouldn't have any issues with it from there on out. But initially to get it in there, it is kind of a pain. Uh, once you get your wire bent, you just run it up to a little corner of your triangle run it through the triangle, fold it back over on itself. I use some cage clips and just little lock it in there. Um, you can run a little piece of electrical tape around that or something like that, just hold it in place or just glue those into place. It works just as well. Um, as you can see, the nail's already bent so it goes in and out of that little piece of square stock right there. And it just works back and forth like this. And as that goes back and forth, that just lifts your pan up and down so that'll lock your pan in place and then when it gets stepped on it just drops down it pulls that nail back and the door falls on the inside inside the rail what it looks like we drilled that hole and added that uh, piece of square stock to the outside but that nail just comes right out that hole and holds the door right there and you can see your pans up just a little bit it's not super it's not a super steep angle and you can adjust where you have that to make it more sensitive or less sensitive. All right, so that's what I just finished doing. The last thing we've got to add to this cage is the door stop, and then I'll show you how this whole cage functions after uh, we get the last little piece on. guys so there's the cage it's all done hope you guys learned something hope this uh, was useful hope some of you guys can get these built if you uh, did follow along and build your own cage I'd love to see them shoot me a picture on Instagram I'll throw the link down below don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you down the line